there's tons of videos out there about these homemade air filters. Great to have in your shop, but how well does the little air filter with a box fan work compared to a retail unit? And then also, I just built a super air filter and we're gonna test these and see just what the difference is and is it worth it or not to build your own. So I'm serious about the air quality in my shop. I've got this um, air quality monitor, it runs 24 seven and sends me a notification when the air particles start getting above a certain limit. All right, so let's go over the pros and cons real quick. You've got these store-bought units. You can just pull out your wallet and have it sent to you the next day that can be a pro or a con depending on how much money you have uh, they're really got a nice interface on them um, and this particular one has a remote control a lot of them have remote controls and timers and things like that uh, it's also extremely quiet something i noticed about a lot of these is they take the exact same size filter now this is the filter that came with it as you see i haven't hardly used it very much you've got a pre-filter and then you've got a secondary filter now this pre-filter here is a 10 MERV, and the smaller the number, the more efficient they are. So this is a 10 MERV, and then I think this is like 100 micron or something. So this is a very fine, so I guess that would be a pro because it's going to filter out extremely fine particles. However, this particular filter is a 16.73 by 9.72 by 1.77 inch are a 42 by 24.7 by 4.5 centimeter. This is about the same size filter that almost every one of these use. It's not a common filter you can run by Home Depot hard uh, pickup, and it's really not one that you can easily find on Amazon. And when you do, they're actually fa uh, fairly expensive for what they are. So definitely I don't like that. And also, you know, this is a very limited amount of surface area. So I measured the number of pleats and the size. So this has about 216 square inches of filter space on this pre-filter. So what I've done here is I've made this box. It's around two foot square, but I'm gonna make it where it's sealed off where all the air that comes in through the filter has to go out through the box. And so all that air, the only place it can escape is through this, which is roughly about a one foot um, 144 cubic inches so that means that whatever speed I'm going to set my atomometer here to feet per minute and so that'll be our CFM uh, roughly like I say it may not be exact but it will be the same for all three so we can be comparing apples to apples so we're up to about 275 uh, cubic foot per minute and we were about 57 on the uh, decibel meter. All right, so we're hitting 275, jumping up to about 290. It's sitting somewhere in between 275 and 295, and our decimal meter was still sitting at about 55, so that's not too bad at all. Okay, so now we're on high. The decimal meter is about 59. Just, I think it's about two uh, decibel increase but our speed is 295 jumping to the 315 and so it's somewhere in between 295 and 315 going to high it's really not a huge difference between low and high in this machine all right so i wanted to be super fair and i took out the um, secondary filter so now that we have just the merv 10 filter in here and we're up to about 430 to 450 uh, cubic feet a minute, which is closer to their stated uh, 500. Now this filter has only ran a little bit of time, you can see, I mean, the brown is the color of the filter. And, you know, I have only tested the unit for a few hours and um, making a video. And so this is what the machine puts out. Okay, so I've been using this for several years and I haven't actually got up inside here to clean up, but you can see all the dust that is built up inside here on the fan. You know, so this is the mount that has gotten through the filters. So I've been running this particular filter right above my table saw for several years now. I've changed filters uh, quite a few times, but um, 
this has 12 by 24 by one inch filters. The ones I'm running are HDX, the Home Depot ones. Uh, it's just a regular $20 box fan I bought at the dollar store and it has worked. But being that it's the square box fan around the blade, you have this space. And so it can actually suck air in through the front and kind of creates a little eddy. And so you don't get as good of efficiency but however, I mean, it does work. And what I really like about this is because the way I built it, you're sucking air in on all four sides instead of like the store-bought one, you only are sucking air in on one side and then it blows it straight out the other side. So it's just moving the air on along. Whereas this one sucks air from all around and then blows it straight down. And so I feel that this one pulls a better airflow pattern. However, it does you know, have the issue with it sucking some of the dust in and then over the years it's built up inside but overall it has really uh, helped the uh, dust you know keeping the dust down in the shop so we're looking at about 58 decibels and about 393 um, feet per minute so just this $20 box fan is actually doing a pretty good job it kind of surprised me I didn't realize how many cubic feet I was getting out of this uh, little cheap box fan. Alright, so now we kicked it up to medium. We're looking at about 63, 64 decibels, but uh, we're at 472 cubic feet, which is more than the store-bought one without filters in, and that's this one with the old dirty filters in. All right, so now it's up on high. So we did get an increase in our decibel. We're up to about 65 decibel. But, I mean, you see the uh, speed. I mean, we're 530, so 530, you know, dropping down to 110. I mean, 510 to 530. So we're somewhere right up in there. So I'm gonna call that about 525. We'll just make it 530. Man, that thing is uh, filtering a lot of air. So I used a drum fan to build this, which has the metal ring that goes right around close to the blades, and that will help keep the air from getting sucked back in. Also, I did put a, another filter on the front. So I've got filters all the way around so that just like on my other one, I can you know, suck in from all directions in my shop, and then it's gonna blow the air straight down to the floor and push it out. But it's going to pre-filter and I've got Merv 11 filters, which you can buy whatever size, but these are 12 by 24 by two inch thick. And then I've got the aft filter, which is a um, 24 by 24 two inch thick. So these around the sides, I figured it up. I measured out the pleats. I've got 1,320 square inches of filter space around the sides on the intake. And then also, uh, where it's coming out, this big filter right here has another 825 square inches of filter space. So these are going to catch most everything. This one will probably never have to be changed. But anything that gets past the, the first set of filters will be caught on here. Now this, as you can see, there's a very fine crack. This is... That store-bought one, you know, it's got a quarter inch around it. The filter fits in nice and loose. And I mean, that thing, it only has 216 inches of filter space compared to the 1300. Because I know I'm bad about not changing my filters as often as I should. But this is going to give me over six times the amount of filtering before it gets clogged up. So let's put this in there and see how well it works. So here's a real quick peek inside of this one. As you can see, it's got the metal drum, which uh, the solid steel around. And so that is going to keep, you know, any of the dust from coming around the edge of those blades. And even if it tried to suck in, that front filter would catch it. All right, so we do have a little bit more noise. We're 61 to 62 decibels. But we're sitting at a solid 728, you know, flipping up every once in a while up to like the 740s. Uh, so, you know, we're putting out with uh, much more filter space, you know, 730 cubic feet 
of uh, air flow through those filters. All right, so I kicked it up to medium. We did get an increase in decibels, but we're hitting 885 cubic feet per minute. All right, so we're at about 69, 70 decibels, definitely getting up there, but we're also at 984, clicking over 1,000 cubic feet a minute, and that's cubic feet filtered air a minute. So we'll definitely get some good air exchanges with this. All right, so we got a lot of data, so let's put it in context. So it's recommended six to eight air exchanges um, for a workshop. If a 24 by 24 by 8 garage, 8 exchanges would be about 576 cubic foot a minute of airflow you needed. So that's probably why there's so many of these air filters that are rated about 500 because that hits right there between the 6 to 8 time air exchange per hour for a two car garage which is what a lot of people have. So also OSHA says the action level decibel is 85 decibels, you know, for an eight hour work period. None of these exceeded that. However, some of these are louder than the others. But also, let's put this into perspective. The retail unit here it runs about $250. I'll put an associate link down in the link. It's a great unit. And don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with it, you know, $250. That equals out to about 79 cents a cubic foot of airflow. Now, on high at the uh, 70, and that's where I figured all these uh, figures here at was on with the machines on high. It raised our ambient level about nine decibels. So I did the uh, math there, and that's about 2.8 decibels per hundred cubic foot of air moving. So, you know trying to compare apples to apples. Now the old box fan I had back there, that one cost me about $98 for the filters, the plywood, and um, the fan. So that works out to about 18 cents a cubic foot a minute. Now it did raise the decibels about 14 on high, but that's only 2.6 2 decibels per 100 cubic foot of air movement. So if you put that in perspective again, it actually raised it higher, but we were getting more airflow, so it was less increase, you know, um, for the same amount of air movement. So we got the drum fan over here, the one I just built, and why I was going to go ahead and test these while I had them all here in the shop. Well, that one ended up costing me about $165 to build, but that is only 16 cents per cubic foot of air movement. So we're looking at 79 cents for the store bought, the box fan's 18 and this one is 16. So, um, you know, because we're moving higher volumes. Now this one did raise the decibels, 20 decibels. However, it was still, you know, under what OSHA allows for an eight hour work day. And if you figure it at decibels per hundred cubic foot of air movement, it was only two decibels per every hundred uh, cubic foot of air movement. And that's on high. Um, but with the amount of air that this is moving, we can definitely uh, turn it down and run it on low. And so we don't have the near about the amount of um, noise. And then if we do something that is really dirty, we can reach over there and kick it up on high. Let me know what you think about this. Uh, let me know if there's any interest in uh, doing a build video on this uh, particular fan. This is the information I needed. I didn't see it out there. So I wanted to know what it was. And I'm just putting it out there for you. So uh, if you see something that uh, I did wrong, let me know. And that way I'll do it better next time. So until then, everybody have a wonderful afternoon.